the Bible's corrupt, but some of it is true. You know, no, I mean? the Quran doesn't say the Bible's corrupt. Your prophet's corrupt, but the Quran <laughs> says the Bible's not corrupt. So don't manifest because I told you if you manifest, I'm going to take you out by the power of Jesus Christ. No, the Quran does not say the Bible's corrupt. It actually says the Quran is corrupt, but it says the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Open up Surah Al Hijr. <laughs> you laugh, I'm going to make fun of you. I told you, respect yourself. Okay, go to Surah Al Hijr, read chapter 15, verses 90 91. As we sent down those who divided and as have made the Quran into shreds. Yes. Now, can you show me where your Quran says that they made the Torah into shreds? They made the Injil into shreds. It says that's what they did to your Quran. No, do you know what it means? I didn't ask what it means. Let me repeat my challenge again. I know you're pretending to be listening. We just read in your Quran a warning to those we sent down. We sent down those who divided, doesn't say scripture, who have made the Quran into shreds. I don't care what you think it means. I will show you from the Hadith what it means. But before we go there, here's my challenge again. Pretend you're listening. Can you show me in your Quran where it says those who we sent down who divided the Torah into shreds, those who we sent down who divided the gospel into shreds. Can you show me where the Quran says that about the Torah and the gospel, what it says about the Quran? No, because it doesn't particularly say that. That's why. Okay. So do you have Surah Al-Baqarah ready? Because I'm going to show you that your Quran says the Bible is not corrupt and your Bible buries your prophet and your theology in a minute. But go to chapter 2 of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. Read 40 to 44. Make sure you read slowly and carefully so you can get what you're reading so I don't have to correct you constantly. O children of Israel, remember my favor which I have bestowed upon you before my covenant that I will fulfill your covenant and be afraid of me. And believe in what I have set down confirming that which is with you. Okay, before you move on, parse it for me. This is addressing... The children of Israel at what time? What date? When? Um, the seventh century. The time of your prophet? Yeah. Now you just set yourself up, but I'm not going to go there. That's a tangent. So it says, believe what was sent down, confirming what? Is already with you. Okay. What did they have at that time of your prophet? They had the Torah. And can you parse the verb for me, sadaqah? What does it mean? Because when it says confirming what is with you, what does sadaqah mean? Because it Adaka. comes from the form of sadaqah. So where you get sadiq, tasdiq. What does it mean? Sadaqah, I mean like giving. No, you're, you're confusing sadaqah with zakat because zakat is called sadaqah, but that's not the inherent meaning. Here it's using a form of sadaqah where you get a sadiq, tasdiq. So what does it mean? Musadiqun. What does it mean to confirm? That's what I'm trying to tell you, the Arabic, because you guys tell me the Quran is only Quran and Arabic. So what does it mean, confirm? To falsify or to bear witness to the veracity, integrity of what you have? Uh, it just means to confirm. So when it says that Yahya will confirm a word from Allah, or Mary confirmed the words and the books of her Lord. Do you understand what sadaqah means? Do I have to explain it to you? Are we going to play these games? Yeah. yeah, I get what you mean. Okay, so what does it mean to confirm now? It means it to means testify to, to the truth. The veracity of something that I bear witness to this person here. I testify this man is a man of integrity. Like when your prophet called Abu Bakr a Sadiq. Yeah. So here your Quran says the Quran supposed to confirm what is with them, bearing witness that what they have is true. Don't make me repeat that five million times to get the point. But now keep reading. You're at 41, read all the way to 44. Okay. And don't mix the truth with falsehood or conceal the truth while you know it. How do you conceal the truth if you don't have it and you don't know it? Can I conceal something I don't have? Hey, listen, um, you know the part of the Torah is like, uh, it talks about the prophet. Don't, get, don't give me a sermon. Answer the question that's in the text in front of your eyes. How do they conceal the truth if they don't have it? I don't want to hear your sermon. You can preach that that Friday, the Joma. <laughs> part, part of the Torah. No, it the doesn't truth. say part. Nor does it say part. Don't it add don't truth or falsehood. It did not say that the falsehood is part of the book you read because your Quran says it confirms what they have. So now you're so stupid. You just said your prophet confirmed the falsehood in their book. You see how stupid you are? No, you confirmed the truth in that book. No, it didn't say that. It says confirming what is with you. Don't let me have to walk you through your Quran. I get your argument, but the Quran okay. says multiple 44. things. 44, what do they read? What do they read? 44. It says, you order righteousness of the people and forget yourselves while you recite the scripture. Then when you what do they recite? The scripture. And 41, that's the scripture that was with them that the Quran confirmed, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay, now go to 289. And when there came to them a book from Allah confirming that which was with them, although before they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieved, but when there came to them which they recognized, they disbelieved in it. So the curse of Allah be upon the disbelievers. Yes. Curse be upon those who follow Muhammad. Now, what did 289 say? Confirming what? Confirming what was with them. So what was with them again? The Torah. Okay. Only the Torah? The, the, okay. the Torah, the Tanakh. Okay. Read 91, verse 91. And when it said to them, 
believe in what Allah revealed. They say we believe in what was revealed to us. They just believe in what came after it. Well, it is in the truth confirming which is with them. Say, well, then why did you kill the Prophet of Allah before if you indeed are believers? So several verses says that one of the signs that the Quran is true and that we should follow it, it confirms what they had. What was with you? You, you guys, what you have, this confirms it. So do I need to give you 50,000 more verses that the Quran says it confirms what they had and even Jesus confirmed what was between his hands? So stop with your Bible corruption because I don't want to to something I want to I get what you're saying, but the Quran says the Torah is corrupt. No, it doesn't. You're lying. Do you want me to show you? And I'll bury you when you show me the verse that you think proves it. Don't tell me 279, because I'll bury you in 279, and I'll bury you in nah. 548, and I'll bury you in 378. Make my day. There's, there's, there's another one. There's another one. Yeah, give me give me 50 more. I'll give you this one. Um, you know, Surah uh, Juma, IFI, clearly says it's corrupt. No, that shows that you're a dumbass donkey, because it says you are a dumbass, a donkey, that don't know the value of the Torah. You see how stupid you are? You misquoted no, says... 62 verse 5. But you know in the Torah, you know what it says? Yeah, read it because it shows that you're the ass. You're actually that very dumb ass that the Quran says. Read it, 62 verse 5. Yeah, it says, I know what it says better than your prophet this is, does. This is an example of those who've been given the Torah, but they've not taken it on. Like the example of a donkey carrying a book. Yeah, so you're the donkey because only a donkey would misinterpret that passage. It says they are like a donkey that doesn't understand the value of the Torah, doesn't say they put the Torah. So that's why I so say you're a donkey. 62 verse 5 does not say the Jews corrupted. It says they don't know the value of the Torah. It's like a donkey that you put books on it. Does that mean the donkey corrupted the books or the donkey doesn't know the value of the books that it's carrying? I mean, they didn't take it seriously. Uh, thank you. Exactly. Uh, listen, you know this verse in Genesis? Have you heard of this verse? Can you stop changing? Don't run like Aisha ran from it's, the prophet. A, the Torah was given to who? Uh, children of Israel. Okay, so who gave it to the children of Israel? Allah. And how did he? He came down on a donkey and gave it to them? Not through Moses. I'll say it again. So the Torah was given through who? Through Moses. Okay, I'm going to give you $10 million, and I'll have my cat and dog take shahada if you show me where it says the Torah was given to Moses in your Quran. In your Quran. It doesn't specifically say that. But say it again? It doesn't specifically say that. Oh, so you've been lying through your teeth about your Quran, and I'm correcting you. I'm not saying the Quran said exactly that. So, no, but I asked you, how did Allah give the Torah to the children of Israel? He said, Moses, how did you get that? Where did you get that from? Through the traditions and everything. Oh, the tradition that comes several centuries later that's dependent on what the Jews and Christians teach. Okay, nice one.